Yo, I know you've seen the unparalleled mechanics and pure speed of Usain Bolt and how he uses that to dominate the track world. But what about the pure speed of the human cheetah Tyree Kill? His ability to explode off the line, zipping past his opposition, getting into that end zone to rack up them points. Or on the basketball court, someone like Russell Westbrook zipping through his opponents, using that incredible speed to fly down the court, finishing powerfully at the rim. From the 40s of John Ross to the on-field speed of people like Gareth Bale and Cristiano Ronaldo, one thing is for sure. Elite speed typically leads to elite athletes. What up, y'all? It's Yo, your boy, good? Coach Isaiah, here with my man, Kieran. What's good? What's good? Uh, welcome back to Session to Blessing. Today, we're going to take you through progressions to build linear speed in your athlete. Who better than my boy, Kieran? He's a cornerback for the Denver Warriors, a running back for Monarch High School here in the Denver Metro, as well as a track sprinter at Monarch. Yes, so I got some speed and power exercises I'm gonna show you guys that you can do in the gym to help build your foundation. And then my man Kieran and I are gonna take you through a few mechanic drills we always use in our warmups before any session. So we're always improving that technique. Then we're gonna show you guys some 20 and 40s. I'll give you some breakdowns of positive and negative body positions at different stages throughout the run. And you see what kind of times we put up my best time ever is like a 4.97 or 8. So my man Karen is probably going to smoke me. But that's <laughs> yeah. why I had to have a real athlete out here, not just the coach. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's jump in. Yeah, let's get it. All right, so let's start out by building the foundation, y'all. Developing the necessary muscle tissue and strength to properly perform sprints. Beginning with our front squat. I love this exercise because it's a great way to develop the muscle tissue and strength of the legs with great posture, building that strength and integrity from the ground up. When we look into our front squat form, you can see that the hips are down, feet flat, chest tall, core engaged, much like we're gonna do during a sprint exercise. Obviously this doesn't directly translate, but this is why we gotta train the mechanics next. Moving into our sprinter's lunge, see I'm getting that opposite arm opposite leg action driving the knee up heel under the knee toes up coming down on the ball of the foot so you can see I am dorsiflex unlike what a normal personal trainer would teach you then we'll get a little more explosive with it getting that push back now right so our power balance sprinters lunge Falling down, bouncing up. This one helps a little more with the acceleration than the top end speed. But if you can't get out of the hole fast, you're never going to reach that maximal speed. All right, so now we're going to jump into our dynamic warm up. This gives us an opportunity to get loose while working on some of the mechanical aspects of sprinting. First up, we got our A skip. The A skip gives us the opportunity to build the driving leg power for acceleration 
while working on that opposite arm, opposite leg movement. Getting that knee up to about hip level, heel under our knee, driving under. Moving on to our B skip now. This is just like the A skip, except we're extending that leg when the knee reaches the top, pulling down and striking the ball of the foot under us like we would in the stride of a max speed sprint. This is top end mechanics. Last but not least, our power skip, driving off of that leg, getting that opposite knee, opposite arm up, trying to produce as much power as we can into the ground. This is gonna help us explode off the line. Let's go. Heating up. So you've seen some of the strength and power exercises we use, as well as some of the mechanical techniques we use in our dynamic warm-up to increase our sprint performance. Now it's time for an analytical breakdown, baby. Let's break down some of Kieran's sprints to show you the things he's doing right to hit a 4.5740 at 17 years old. All right. So let's look at his starting position. Look at those shins. See how forward those shins are, driving off the balls of his feet, shoulders in front of him, then drives through that rear knee and hip. His other leg up, ready to punch down, strong arms, not quite as much extension in the second step, and his shin angle on that left leg could pull back a little to match the right. But regardless, in a power position, strong, Full but quick arm swings, keeping those shoulders in front. Doesn't really start to come up tall till right about here. All right, so let's look at his top end mechanics. Nice tight arms, been at the elbow, driving through that knee and hip full extension matching shin angles knees about hip height then he extends that front leg his left leg striking the ball of the foot almost directly under his hips to propel him forward with long powerful quick cycles in his stride So you should be able to see the system here. 
essentially what we're doing is developing muscle. Uh, that might not be necessary for all athletes. If you get a more advanced athlete who already has a substantial amount of muscle, this might not be a phase you really need to spend much time in. But for me, with a lot of my youth athletes, they don't have a lot of muscle mass yet. So we're going to start with trying to increase the cross-sectional area of the muscle fibers, especially in the legs, glutes. Um, and then we're going to really switch our focus into increasing the strength or force generation potential of those muscles. Then the stronger we get those muscles, we're teaching them to express this strength quickly to develop power so they become explosive. This is mostly just focusing in on linear speed. Obviously, in my opinion, acceleration and multi-directional speed are the most important aspects for most sports, most athletes, soccer, football, rugby, lacrosse, hockey, basketball, you name it. A number of sports, acceleration and multi-directional speed are gonna be the most important. Because you're always switching directions, you rarely hit your max speed, but you're always accelerating, right? Always running down the ball, always exploding out in plays. But in this video, we really dialed into that linear speed for those opportunities when you get those big breaks, all right? So focus on the technique and mechanics, Make sure there's a substantial amount of muscle to maximize strength and power, and then get out there and run. Analyze the running mechanics, increase any area that's holding them back. Get them as fast as possible. Then they can use that speed to enhance their overall game. Speed may be considered one of the most important things in sports. But again, I would argue acceleration, your explosiveness, and multi-directional speed, agility, are more important, but we'll leave that to opinion. Nonetheless, it's all about building the arsenal of the athlete so that they're armed and ready for anything that comes at them. All right? Versatility increases their ability to perform in chaos. The more versatile they are, the more prepared they'll be at whatever comes at them. At the end of the day, it's our job to make our athletes the best possible. All right, I'll catch you guys next time in Session to Blessing. Coach Isaiah, I'm out.